Welcome to the Comlex 5 minute review and visit us at www.comlexflashcards.com for more resources. Today's talk is on celiac disease and you can find the entire lecture on our website. Celiac disease is a autoimmune mediated intolerance of gliotin leading to steatorrhea. It's associated with people of northern European descent and gliadin, which is a part of the protein gluten, is the substance that's associated with small intestinal damage. Surface epithelial cells are destroyed, the villi become blunted or flat, and the crypts hypertrophy. Brush border enzyme levels are greatly decreased. And so what are some of the clinical features of celiac disease? Well, diarrhea is the most common symptom. Patients also present with fatigue, stomach growling, rumbling, abdominal pain, weight loss, abdominal distension, flatulence, and so pediatric patients commonly have failure to thrive in addition to being irritable. Again, short stretcher, iron resistance, anemia, and rickets may be seen in older children. Here's your differential diagnosis. You want to rule out things like rotavirus, giardiasis, other causes of diarrhea, um, allergic enterocolitis, all these other allergies and um, you know such as milk protein allergy, soy allergy, rice allergy, causes of malabsorption such as lactose intolerance, topical sprue, Crohn's disease, pancreatic insufficiency, and lymphoma. Again, dermatitis herpetiformis is a rash that's associated with celiac disease. And so say a patient presents with symptoms of celiac disease and is not on a gluten-free diet first what you would like to do is perform a serological IgA TG antibody testing. If it is positive you want to go for the small bowel biopsy and if you get a positive result the diagnosis is confirmed and you want to start a gluten-free diet and monitor the patient for any improvements and again if there's improvement then your diagnosis is confirmed. Um, now if there's a negative result you still want to follow up the patient but consider other diagnosis and possibly repeating the biopsy. However if there's a negative result of the IgA antibody test then you know you you may choose to go to a small bowel biopsy if there's still a high clinical suspicion. Um, if there is a positive result then you want to treat as it's celiac disease and monitor for improvement. Again, if it's negative, then you want to look for the other causes in our differential diagnosis. Um, and so this is a nice algorithm just to give you an overview of how to approach patients with celiac disease. Again, for diagnosis, the presumptive diagnosis is based on a combination of clinical presentation and positive serology for tissue transglutaminase or anti-endomycial antibody tests. Distal duodenal biopsies are needed to confirm the diagnosis and expect clinical improvement on a gluten-free diet after 6 to 12 months with normalizing of serologic test results. Additional biopsies after gluten challenge are generally not needed and they may establish diagnosis if high clinical suspicion um, is warranted and there's negative initial testing. In terms of the key points in management, IgA tissue transglutaminase antibodies and IgA endomycial antibodies are appropriate first-line tests and because IgA deficiency can cause false negative results, total IgA levels should be measured in patients at high risk for celiac disease. Small bowel biopsy should be performed to confirm the diagnosis and a gluten-free diet is generally recommended. In terms of the celiac disease diet, all initial serology testing and biopsy should be performed before starting the gluten restricted diet. Um, again, their patients should have a strict adherence to the diet and um, those patients who adhere to that diet for greater than five years may show a reduced risk for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, another association with celiac disease. The amount of gluten that causes symptoms varies among patients and gluten-free diet may reduce symptoms in patients with positive endomycial antibodies and only mild enteropathy. Again, oats in diet appear safe in controlled trials, but some patients may have oat intolerance. Wheat starch-based gluten-free products appear to be safe. And here's our references. Again, summing things up for celiac disease, you want to make sure that you know you look for 
a patient with a northern European descent possibly um, and on on biopsy you may see blunting of the villi um, you can see lymphocytes in the lamina propria um, also decreased mucosal absorption that primarily affects the jejunum and um, as we mentioned before serum levels of tissue transglutinase are used for screening and also remember the association with dermatitis titus herpetiformis and um, if you know these facts I think you should be in good shape for the test Good luck for your exam.